Okay, so I'm going to dismiss that only because the font does look weird. So he plays D4. Um, tournament opening I've been preparing, or the thing I've been trying to add to my repertoire, is the Slav defense. Um, allows for... oh. And then there's the symmetrical Slav. I'm not too afraid of this. Um, though I'm not so familiar with it. So I'm trying to figure out, is bishop f5 something appropriate here? Um, I know e6 looks plausible, but inserting bishop f5 first might make some sense. I don't want a copycat with knight c6. Um, so let's, let's try to break the symmetry this way. And perhaps this sort of thing is a motivator for me to um, to try to prepare something else other than the Slav. Because I did have some theory prepared here, but not nearly as much as most players prepare for this opening. Okay, so I see he's trying to put his bishop outside the pawn chain. Um, so I'd originally considered bishop f5 and e6 but I'm trying to avoid symmetry. So for the sake of getting something fun moving here, uh, I'm playing g5. So there's some risk there for sure. But hey, it's a game, right? I'm trying to learn things. After this game, we'll have a little bit of post-mortem trying to figure out, um, you know, other than three queen takes d5, which I was not going to do. Not today. Not in the mood for that kind of move today. Um, other than that, just what opportunities were missed by black? So, okay, he has committed his bishop outside the pawn chain. Um... He's obviously intending bishop b5 check, so let's beat that by a tempo. I have not yet decided where my queen side's going to move, um, but I will have to start moving them soon, else they just stay on the back rank for the whole game. Um, so, okay. Actually, the interesting thing here is that my queen doesn't make any sense on c7 or on d6. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense on a5. So by process of elimination, the queen is actually the one with the fewest options. Um, so I'm electing to move my queen to b6. And say if he protects this by playing queen c2, uh, I could consider knight a6 or knight c6, intending knight b4. Um, let's see, can I highlight some of this? I was intending to... there we go. So I could do something like this. Obviously he would counter with, uh, with a3. Um, so I'd have to think carefully about where I want this knight to end up. Uh, perhaps a better idea would be this, and if a3, then instead choose this way of moving forward. Um, oh, another thing I should have thought more about, I was thinking about earlier, was um, playing b6 and bishop a6, trying to trade for this light squared bishop, and develop my knight over here. But I don't like having the knight developed on the rib. Uh, looks kind of absurd there. Uh, so, yeah, in the interest of not trapping my knight, um, and given that his pawns and pieces lock down a lot of squares, this seems to be the best place for my knight to go. Again, I think he's probably going to play a3 here. Um, although that does create a weakness on b3. Um, all right, 
let's develop the bishop this way. If he hits my bishop, I can just take the knight. And it creates some imbalances here. I know I've been playing really loosey-goosey kind of moves here, but um, I was originally going to play um, bishop d7. Uh, actually, e6 doesn't look so bad here. Um, e6 does defend the pawn, and thereby allows my knight to move freely. Um, where do I want my rooks? I want to put one of my rooks on c8, but which one? I'm thinking rook f c8. Um, just being optimistic that I'm going to get an a5 break later. That's really optimistic. Um, well, I think a5 is more likely than f5. But that's just pessimism on my part. I should have some have some confidence that I'm going to break through somewhere. Um, also, this pawn's loose, and I want to play knight h5, but at the moment that drops this pawn. Um, knight h5, knight takes d5, queen a5, knight c3, knight g3, pawn g3. I don't see any tactic to justify this. Um, still, I'm not going to break on the queen side. This this rook belongs on the half or on the fully open file. It's going to call it a half open file because there was some stuff over here, but none of those things that are on that file are pawns. So this is actually considered to be an open file. Um, And bishop to e6, while usually a bad idea in similar opening positions, might be a thing here. Um, also e6 and then bishop f5, taking, trying to exploit this weirdly placed queen might be a thing. Um, got a lot of options here. I don't need to play e6, and I do find it useful that this d6 squared is denied to my opponent. Um, yeah, everything's still up in the air over here. Over here, it's clear my knight's not going to b4. It's clear the knight's not going to d4 or e5. And even if it were to go through e7, where would it go next? Because the pawns control everything. I mean, it, yeah, there's no future for this knight other than a5 to c4 or a5 to b3. So this is kind of my worst place piece, and I should improve its position right now. Uh, so if I do that, I'm not hanging anything, right? I mean, strategically it's justified, and tactically it seems okay. This is very much not in my style. My style is just directly attack the target. Um, it's very caveman chess uh, is my style. Um, so this sort of thing where I'm nuancing my pieces to maneuver them forward step by step and not hang things and stuff, really, again, not my style. Um, but. Uh, improving the position of your worst place piece is a thing in chess. I'm still curious where in the opening I um, I might have missed opportunities. Oh uh, yeah, I could have gone for a, a symmetrical position but I've largely tried to avoid that, and I think I succeeded and created some complications here. Um, I think he doesn't like the fact that I'm sort of kind of threatening knight b3. Um, he might, I don't know. Although, 
after I've played to b3, where could I go next? It's kind of a problem. Um, so at some point I might be forced to play my bishop back to g6 and hit the queen and uh, assert some force on this diagonal, even without him playing h3. Also, he might be trying to set some kind of silly trap, like moving the queen somewhere, and then I play knight b3, and he plays knight a4, and suddenly my knight's on pre. Um, that's another way to try to play the position. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's placed... Okay, so he's played b4. Um, so I have to decide, do I go forward knight c4, or do I go back knight c6? There actually is an option here. Or I could just ignore that entirely and pile up more pressure on this knight here, like knight e4. Um, looks really tempting. Knight e4, pawn takes knight, queen takes pawn. And I've got three pieces attacking uh, the knight. Knight e4. Uh, I was going to say he could bring up another defender to defend it somehow, and then knight takes, but he doesn't have any defender. Um, we could do knight e4, knight a4, and both of our queens are under attack. Or knight e4, knight takes d5. Rook takes, knight takes, pawn takes knight, pawn takes knight, pawn takes pawn. Actually, the bishop's hanging here too, so there'd have to be another in-between move. Rook takes, wait, how's this go? Knight e4, knight moves away, like knight takes d5. Rook takes queen, knight takes queen, rook takes bishop. Um, pawn takes knight, pawn takes knight. Uh, that looks pretty good for me. So I'm not seeing any tricky tactics to try to get out of this, so I'm just going to assume we're going to trade a knight for a knight. And I'm winning a pawn, and at the end of that, uh, I'll have a rook on c3, or a knight on c3 hitting this, and it's just going to be beautiful. It's not like he... I mean, he could move his bishop to c4, but that doesn't stop the problem. The problem is that I'm attacking on the c file. So really, I think that um, I think this pawn takes knight is forced, and since it attacks my queen, I'd have to take back. And then I just take on c3 next, and I've got a decently good position and plenty of threats and stuff. Uh, I guess maybe after we've done this exchange on a5 and I'm threatening c3, maybe he somehow attacks b7 and starts mopping up pawns. I wasn't too concerned about that possibility because my queen does defend a7, so at least I'm keeping at least the a7 pawn. Now that I'm looking at it, he's got queen a4, um, which thankfully does not change the situation very much. Uh, it does force me to play queen takes knight, and then he can play queen takes a7. Um, I've still got a lot of pressure on his position, and I could choose to liquidate after that. I could play rook a8. Queen takes b7, rook takes a3, and sure, he does win um, my e-pawn, but I don't care. Um, just material-wise, even if we do trade off all the queenside pawns and he wins a pawn, 
it would still be a very difficult end game for white to win. And my pieces are very active, so I'm not concerned. Um, probably he's calculating queen a4, queen takes, queen takes a7, um, bishop takes f3, uh, he's forced to play, no he's not, he's not forced to do that. But if he does bishop takes, uh, I guess I'll try to illustrate this here. It's queen a4, queen c3, queen a7, uh, bishop takes, and if bishop takes, then I have knight to d2 forking um, uh, f1 and f3. Now you could just move the rook away, uh, and then I end up taking the bishop and doubling his pawns. And double pawns aren't so bad. Uh, this bishop on g3 is actually very strongly placed. Um, so he's probably calculating something like this. I've been playing too much blitz and not enough slow chess, so I'm kind of getting myself into trouble um, on account of not having considered this uh, queen h or queen a4 move. Let's draw a red arrow there. I missed that, so it's causing me a little bit of a headache here. Um, unfortunately, my in-between move, knight takes knight, just drops my queen, and knight takes bishop, winning a bishop for a queen isn't good enough. And there's just not enough compensation for that, so I'd need to do queen takes knight. Um, anything other than queen a4, I would be surprised if he gets counterplay, because I have knight takes knight. Um, and if queen a4, if I try to trade queens, I'm already down a knight. Maybe I could trap a piece and get the material back, but that's pretty risky. Maybe it works. I doubt it. So if queen takes, knight takes, bishop d7, say knight c5 maybe? I don't know. It doesn't look plausible, so... We're just going to go with my gut here. My gut says that this is the only move that looks even plausible in this position. Um, so I'm just going to play that. Uh, now I do have this pressure here. I do have maybe this hitting f3. I've um, got enough pieces on this file such that... Oh wait. I don't have a checkmate threat. I thought I did, but it's not a mate. Um, hmm. So, yeah, obviously I'm out of form, is the point. Regardless, he just takes the pawn. Um, so do I take on g3? Bishop is quite the thorn. I really don't like it. Um, I mean, you hear all these things about good bishop, bad bishop, and all that, but this seems um, very much to the contrary. This bishop on the light squares isn't able to attack very much because uh, just the way all the pawns are placed. Um, so obtaining that light squared bishop might not be so useful. Well, before I consider trades, can I win material? Um, like, what threats can I make in this position? I can move queen b2, threatening rook c2. Um, also, queen b2 threatens rook a8, trapping the queen. Wow. Uh, okay, this got a lot more complicated. So just to so it defends this knight already defends that, um, and so rook a eight is a pretty nasty trap. But maybe counter with rook a to b one. Um, after which, oh man, 
So say we see a combination that goes something like this. Queen there, rook here, just innocently defending. Uh, rook a8, rook ab1, um, after which both queens are hanging. Uh, queen takes b1, queen takes a8, queen takes e1 check. So it's that sort of thing I guess I'm planning here. Because uh, I have active pieces. I could take g3 whenever I want to, but this threat of doubling on the second rank contains more than a bit of poison. Um, so yeah, I'm going to intend rook c2, which combined with this other fork uh, of these two squares is just pretty strong. Uh, uh, it's, it's the reason my style or my uh, Lee chess looks that up cool. It's just, I have a style installed and I also have some user scripts installed that make it just look nice. Um, so let me see if I can find. Um, there's a team on Lee chess called User Scripts. Um, let me see if I could get the URL for that. Where'd it go? All teams, user script. Uh, I don't see it. But yeah, you can, if you install this style and you install the user script, you can have your leeches look awesome. I just got really bored of the black just the really bland look that the site offers. It's functional, but it's not beautiful. So if I, I'm sorry, I should put the rook down. Let's think about this. If I play rook a8, he plays one of his rooks to hit my queen, probably, because uh, he wants to get his queen out of there. And if I take, he could, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I calculated this out last turn. I'm calculating it mentally, but not articulating it correctly. But I see that I am winning material here. So yeah, queen b2 was really nasty fork. I'm curious before queen b2, um, just how unsound was my play? Because I'm pretty sure after queen b2, I'm just winning at least the bishop. Um, so yeah, here's where we get to talk about Zvishenzuk. So normally you think, oh yeah, I just take the queen, he takes my queen, no big deal, right? Well, not exactly, because I could throw in an in-between move. Like I could say, okay, so my queen's hanging, but before I take his queen, I'm going to take something else first. Like I could take here, check. And then next turn I'm going to take his queen. So I then win a pawn for my troubles, right? But... Um, sometimes, like if we're doing a Zwischen Zook and I'm taking a pawn, maybe he says, you know what, before I lose my queen, I'm also going to take a fake. And suddenly you get these mad capture races all over the board. Um, here though, uh, there's a difference. I'm going to take the rook. He could, he could also do an in-between move of his own, taking my rook. But then I take this rook with check. So this queen is trapped, um, and he's got no in-between move to save it. Yeah, so this does in fact happen in the game. So this is another in-between move. This is two in-between moves in a row. And now I'm up a rook. Um, okay. Still up a rook. Still up a rook and a pawn. And GG. All right. Yeah, good game, well played. I'm kind of curious about some of the details of this opening. And what the heck, let's run the computer analysis while we're thinking. Um, okay, so I do have this set to look at master games and such. Okay, yeah, unsurprisingly, this does not happen very often in master games. Um, 
And even when masters come across this, oh, the majority of the time they do play c takes d5. Occasionally, I guess they'll get bored and play something like knight f6, but um, predominantly this is the move. Knight c3. Um, both. Okay, knight f6 is the more popular move, so I'm assuming it's probably um, something that's going to lead to positions that I'm more familiar with. h6. Okay, my decision of h6 was not a top move. I should just keep developing my pieces. Um, knight c6 is... Um, how many times is that? That can't be right, can it? Oh, it's 70 times more popular um, than bishop f5. So I was avoiding bishop f5. Um, they do say knights before bishops in general. A6 looks interesting. Um, G6 I was considering, but G6 tends to, I don't know, if I play G6 I'm kind of saying I'm not going to play E6, I'm not going to play G5, and I'm not going to play H6, so I think G6 is a bit committal. Um, Knight C6 and A6 are flexible, at least in terms of what I choose to do on the king's side. Um, G6 pretty committal, E6 also pretty committal. So yeah, I'd prefer to do either knight c6 or a6 here. Um, I played h6, which is probably okay. Yeah, my opponent correctly played bishop f4, because, I mean, now bishop can't go to g5. I didn't think this was going to happen, just given what I would normally expect of a Slav opening. Um, but apparently, you know, he just went with it. And that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then, yeah, we deviate from book, and we're off in the wild blue yonder. Was queen b2, queen a4 any better? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Once I've played queen b2 here, um, let's dismiss the opening explorer. There we go, there's the dismiss button. Yeah, once I've played this, you should just let the bishop go and get the queen out of there. This is a very risky pawn grab, and I happen to be able to punish it immediately. Um, there might be other better ways to escape the queen, but, um, yeah, no, leaving the queen here was ridiculous. You just can't do that, um, as I demonstrated in the game. Yeah, apparently Stockfish, um, prefers knight takes g5 for some silly, fun reason. I'm not sure I get it, but there's probably a point to this. Um... I guess uh, the point is that I have to do h takes, because if I move my knight away and then I play rook, B8, or rook a8, he's got this. Um, so, first to play rook a8 immediately. Maybe it just stockfish just undervalued this thing. I'm not sure. Oh, I get it. Maybe. Wait. I thought I had it there. So. Let's see, what is it recommending here? What does this engine recommend? Um, yeah, bishop takes bishop. I'm not sure why this is a huge difference with respect to what happened in the game. Because now white's sacked a piece to lose his queen in a different way. Um, I guess the bishop's not hanging at the end, which is kind of a bonus. Oh, so you're just losing a queen for a rook. You're just losing an exchange, albeit a pretty big exchange. But yeah, you needed to do something to escape the queen or not lose an entire, um, a lot of material here. Uh, so queen takes a7 was a really risky pawn grab. Um, backing up. Queen takes c3, apparently played that okay. Wait, so knight a5 was fine. Again, I guess the program didn't like this move so much, but this retort was completely uncalled for uh, in this position. Um, so... Oh wow, so the stockfish was cool with my choice of 94 here. Um, Two inaccuracies this whole game. Uh, 
according to Stockfish. So there's rook a c8 and bishop g4 were my two inaccuracies. Um, I didn't want to play e6, it's just too rigid. I might have wanted to drop my bishop back to d7 at some point, although e6 does make some sense, but it's not my style. Um, bishop e6, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I think this is the thing I can take away from this game. Other than what I did in the opening, which was kind of ridiculous on the queen side. Um, now that I've got this ridiculous formation, there's no way for him, his knight to easily attack my bishop. I mean, he could at some point play... Knights don't move that way, they move like this. And this would hit the bishop. Um, but it's pretty easy to prevent the knight from getting there. Just play b6 or knight d7. And so my bishop standing here is pretty strong. There's no C pawn to break open the center and then fork my pieces, so bishop e6 is pretty reasonable. Um, and a lot more solid than what I played. Uh, apparently, yeah, if I play this provocatively, white just needs to strike while the iron's hot, and he missed it. So. Not bad for just rejoining the ladder, but. Uh, does leave something to be desired in general. Uh, it was a fun game. All right, well, I'll have to check in how the other games go are going. Um, so let's get to that, and I'll see you guys next time.